Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be taking a comprehensive look at how we can work with JSON within our Go applications. Now JSON or JavaScript Object Notation as it's more formally known is without a doubt the most popular data format for sending and receiving data across the web. All major languages typically support the data format by default and Go is no different. Now the first thing we're going to look at is how we can marshal JSON in Go. So that's effectively how are we going to take an existing Go object or struct and convert that into a JSON string. Now to get started, we're going to have a type of booked, which will be a struct. And that's going to have both a title and an author. So effectively, we want to take this object and convert it into something that looks like this. Uh, so title is going to be uh, learning concurrency and the author is going to be me. So how do we go about doing this? Well, let's jump into the Visual Studio code that I've got open here and start coding. Now, as you can see here on the left hand side, we have a simple Go program that simply prints out the hello world string. Now, let's first start by creating our book struct. So type book, we have struct, and we'll have a title of type string and an author, again, of type string. Now, within our main function, if we wanted to instantiate a new instance of our book struct, we could do something like this. So book equals book, and we'll specify the title as learning concurrency. Oops. And Python. And the author is going to be Elliot Forbes, which is myself. Now, if you wanted to print that out in a nice fashion, we could choose a printf statement. And we could do percentage plus v slash n and pass in our book object like so. Save that, and if we open up the terminal, I'm just going to slide it bigger, and again run go run main.go, we should see that our book struct has been printed to the console for us. So how do we go about converting the struct that we've defined here into the JSON that we want down here? Well, we can do that by adding some Go tags to our book struct that basically map the fields within our structs to the key and value within our JSON. So if I have the title, I would specify a Go tag which specified title, like so. And I would specify for my author an author tag. And the way we can do that is just after our type declaration, we can do backtick JSON and then we can specify the key. So in this case, we want title and in this case, we want author. And now that we've done that, we can then come down into our main function and we can specify byte array or error equals and we're going to use the JSON package and the Marshall function. So JSON.Marshall, passing in our book, and handle the error. So if error does not equal nil, then we know we've had an issue. So we'll print that out. Otherwise, we want to do fmt.println. And because this, this JSON.Marshall function returns a byte array, we want to cast that as a string and pass in our byte array like so. Perfect. And on save, I've got this set up so that it automatically imports the encoding slash JSON package. So if you don't have that, add that to your list of imports at the top of your file now. Now, when we go to run this, go run main.go, you should see that we have successfully converted our book struct or book instance into a JSON string down here. Now, this represents a really simple example but what happens if we want to have, say, an author struct that is nested within our book struct? So we could do something like this. So we could define our author struct and we could say, um, so name, string. We could then specify the same Go tags. So 
for this one, just lowercase name. Uh, we'll do age int, and we'll do Jason again, lowercase age, and we'll do say developer, and we'll have this as a bool just for an example. So Jason, and we're going to change this up a bit. So as underscore developer like so. Now within my bootstruct, I can then update this and I can just change the type of my author field to the newly declared author struct like so. Now this is going to throw up an error with instantiating our book here. So let's change this now. So just above here, I'm going to declare a new author. Author. And I'm going to specify the name. Again, it's going to be Elliot Forbes. The age is going to be 25. And the developer field is going to be true, like so. Now, just below here, I'm going to take out this string and I'm going to replace it with our author. And save that. Now, because we specified these go tags up here, we should not have to do any further work to our marshalling. And we should be able to run that just the same way as we did last time. And you should see this time that we do indeed have nested elements within our JSON string now. So that's all worked as expected. Perfect. Now, if you look at this down here, it's not exactly the nicest string to read. Now, we can make this a lot more readable by using the Marshall indent function. And we can specify the prefix, which is nothing, and the number of indents, in this case, two spaces. Now, if I save that and rerun our program, you should see that it outputs our JSON string in a much nicer format. Now that's just a nice and quick handy tip for working with JSON strings when you're working in Go. Awesome. So we've been able to marshal some fairly complex nested structs into JSON using the json.marshal and json.marshal indent functions. Now that's all well and good, but what happens if you're doing something like consuming a REST API? and you want to convert an existing JSON string back into a struct. Well, we can again achieve that using the encoding slash JSON package within Go. Now, just to give us a fresh example, I'm going to delete all of this code, and I'm going to delete this as well. So back to square one. Now, in this example, we're going to start off with a really flat JSON structure, and it's going to look something like this. So name, key value pair, and this is just going to be battery. And we're going to have capacity, which in this case is just going to be 40. And we're going to have time, which is going to be an ISO string. That we'll see in just a minute. Now, again, this is a fairly flat structure. But we're going to move on to more complex examples in just a little minute. Awesome. So the first thing we're going to have to do in this particular example is to define a struct for our sensor reading. So type sensor reading struct. And because we know the structure of the JSON that we're going to be unmarshalling, um, we can define these structs ahead of time. Now, the first one is going to map to our name one here, and it's going to be type string. And again, we're going to, want to specify this meta information via go tags. So JSON and name. And next, we're going to want to do capacity, which will be a type int. Again, specifying the go tag for capacity. And then finally, time, which we'll keep for a string right now. And again, JSON colon quotes, uh, oops. and this will be time. Cool. Now let's create a JSON string that will contain all of this information. So best way to do that is backtick, and we're going to specify a name as battery sensor. Uh, capacity is going to be 40 in this example. 
and time I am going to steal from my source here. So time, like so. And again, you can just see this is like an ISO string date. Okay, so underneath this, we're going to want to specify the following. So var reading, which will be of type sensor reading, sensor, try and spell it right. And then we're going to want to do the following. So error is equal to JSON dot unmarshal. And we're going to want to pass in our string as a byte array. So array of bytes, JSON string. And we're going to want to pass in our reading. Uh, sorry, reading object like so. Now below this, we, because we've defined the error, we're going to want to do if error does not equal nil, fmt dot printline the error. Cool. And just like we did in the first half of this tutorial, we're going to want to print out this using a format string. So fmt dot print f. And we're going to use plus v slash n for the new line character. And we're going to pass in our reading. Cool. So when we go to run this, go run main.go, we should see that this has been able to successfully unmarshal our JSON string, which is fairly simple, into our reading object. And we've then been able to print that out using the format string just here. Now, what happens if we want to do nested structures? Well, in just the same way that we defined nested structs within our first half of this tutorial, we can do the same thing again. So we can say something like um, information info. Again, specify the key, which will be info. And we can do type uh, info struct. And we can say description which will be a string, JSON, and we'll keep this short like so. So within our string, we then want to specify info, which will be that, and it will have a description of a sensor reading. Nice and simple. Cool. So when we again go to run this, we should see that we've been able to successfully unmarshal this nested JSON into our new info struct. And that was really nice and simple. Now, sometimes you might not have knowledge of the structure of the JSON string that you're reading. You may not be able to generate a predefined struct that you can subsequently unmarshal your JSON into. Now, if this is the case, then there is an alternative approach that you can utilize which is to use the map string to interface. Now, if we wanted to do this, we could simply delete this and we could do the following. So instead of having a sensor reading type here, we'd have map, which would map a series of strings to an interface. And without changing any more of our code, we'd be able to do the following. So go run main.go. And as you can see, it prints out the map, which contains the name, the capacity, the time, and the nested map, which contains the description. So whilst this is an option, it's not really recommended. Now, if you're building production systems, I would highly recommend trying to find out the structure of the JSON that you're going to be unmarshalling and defining those structs. Now, that's all we're going to cover within this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you have, or if you have any suggestions as to how I can make it better, then please let me know in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe for more programming content. Cheers.